Happy Father's Day, fellas. I got some good buddies who are good dads, good men, and great friends. So hope you guys had a good one. I wanted to pull over off the side of the road here and uh, talk a little bit about leadership and use a little baseball analogy. Hopefully it makes sense. So as a baseball player, as a past baseball player and as someone who loves the game, here's what I know. Baseball is not easy. It's difficult. Uh, actually, to be a, a great, I mean, the best of the best, um, a good hitter is going to actually get on base or get a hit three to four out of ten times. I mean, it's a game of failure. You're not going to perfect it. You're not going to be perfect. Um, it's just it is what it is. And, and all the while, it is so difficult. There are so many techniques and so many skills that you have to work in on and hone and, and just focus on and and you have to you have to work on your skills little by little day by day and you got to work on your fielding techniques you got to work on your hitting your pitching um, if you hit left-handed and right-handed if you're a switch hitter I mean there are so many things that to be a well-rounded decent baseball player there's a lot of things you got to get to it, should, it just is what it is it's, it's not an easy sport Christianity, living out the Christian life is much the same. There's a lot of things we got to get to. There's a lot of things we got to address. Um, for example, the way you speak, uh, the things you look at, the things you listen to, the things you wear, the things you um, think about, the things you long and, 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 and desire and crave, the things that you uh, entertain, um, the things that you do, the things that you don't do, the things that you think in your heart and in your mind, um, the way you gossip, the way you slander. The, I mean, we could pick apart a person and just show all of their sins and all of their flaws because let's be honest, as human beings, there are a lot of things that we do that are not perfect, okay? And, and as a Christian, I've been a Christian now for quite a few years, and um, here's the thing. When I spend time with other Christians and other, other people, you know, it's not very long before I start picking apart and noticing a lot of things about that person that, that they should do differently. They should do better. I mean, from the things that they say to the way that they carry themselves to the pride that they, the, the, the spirit of arrogance that they carry to um, the way they, I mean, I could go on and on and on and sound like I'm judging, but I'm using this as an example. But here's the thing. If I go up to these people and I start telling everyone all of the things about them that I see that they're doing wrong and that they could do better, what would that make me look like? An arrogant, judgmental, um, prideful. Um, and here's the thing. You're right. Let's think about this. A good dad and a good mom, when a baby's born... The baby's crapping its britches. He's peeing everywhere, TTing everywhere. It's probably a more appropriate term there. Um, you know, the baby just screams and whines and keeps you up all night. He's just, I really, he really don't do a whole lot good other than just be there. And there's something in you that just loves that child a whole lot. And so instead of just taking it out on the child and saying, sitting him down and having, hey, listen here, you little boy. You need to stop crapping your pants. You need to get up and walk over there to the bathroom and you need to flush and you need to wipe and wash your hands and don't come out here if you had not done it appropriately. No, you understand that child can't even do that yet. So you're not going to pick apart that baby. You actually are going to pick that baby up and just hold him and love him and you're going to wipe him and you're going to do all the things necessary because you just love that baby. And there's things like, hey, but we'll get to that. He's going to grow. We'll get to that. We'll start addressing that. So he gets older, becomes a toddler, becomes a teen. Then he starts doing a lot of stuff that you're like, oh, we're going to get to that. We're going to have a talk about that, buddy. Hey, when you get home, buddy, we're going to sit down. We're going to have a talk. Now, now, here's the thing. Behind the heart of those talks is a heart of love. Hey, you're my son. I die for you. I love you so much. Uh, but hey, we're going to talk about this. And as a parent, you're going to see a lot of things about that kid and about that child and about that person that you know you got to address. Um, just like as a coach, you're going to see a new player that you're coaching. There's going to be a lot of things you notice quickly that you're going to have to address and you're going to have to get to. Um, in the same way as a Christian leader, you're going to see a lot of things in the life of people that you're leading that you say, hey, we're going to have to get to that. Uh, we're going to have to get to that. And we will. But here's the thing. A person that is truly loving another person will not and does not 
overwhelm other people with guilt and shame and point out all of their flaws all at once. Because God himself does not do that to us. Okay, we're going to finish this talk up. Um, so, so think about this. When you give your life to God and God gives his life to you and puts his spirit in you, he really does begin a sanctifying work, a total makeover work, a process of cleaning you from the inside out. That's what the spirit of God begins to do. Um, this is called sanctification, where he cleanses you and begins to give you better desires and address things in your life. You know, there's a lot of things in your life that you need to work on and that I need to work on that we need to, to, to do better in, to be a more well-rounded, more um, just valuable, just successful human being that, that serves our community better and loves our family better and takes care of people a little bit better. But in order to, to do those things, we're going to have to work on some things in us. And there's a lot of things that need to be addressed, just like there's a lot of things that need to be addressed in my van. We're taking on those things little by little, but I still love my van in the process. Um, and we're going to get to those things. Same thing the way God looks at you. You see, God sees and knows all of your flaws. Trust me, all of your um, things about you that you're doing wrong, all the thoughts that you're having that you're thinking wrong, uh, all of the ways in which you're spending money and talking about people and thinking about people and, and you know, all the things that you do and say that he knows is not the way he would like for you to do. He is not unaware. He knows. Trust me. He knows. He sees it all. But he is so gracious and he is so kind and he is a loving dad that many times takes the approach of this. We'll get to it. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. For now, I love you so much. Just work on this. We'll get to those other things. We'll get to those other things. We'll get to it. Because guess what? God is so proud of you right now, and he loves you so much right now. He's not going to love you anymore when you're perfect, which will never be perfect. But he's not going to love you more when you perform better. He's not. So he's in no rush to overwhelm you and throw guilt trip you and make you feel like a terrible human being because you've got all these areas that you need to work on. Think of it like this. Have you ever heard the term, um, gonna, I'm going to leave no rock unturned, right? You see, because here's the thing. God, if you continue to walk with Jesus and stay close to Jesus, rest assured, he will leave no rock unturned. And here's what I mean. He will shine his light and his spirit will shine a light on every shadow spot, every dark spot, everything in you that is unholy and is unclean and that is selfish and that is wrong and that is sinful, he will shine a light and address that in time and he will get to it. But he will do it in a way that is loving and that is gracious and that is kind. And he will. He will purify you and sanctify you through and through. So rest assured, if you stay close to the Lord and he gets, stays close to you and you abide in him and he abides in you, he will continue to cleanse you, clean you, and he will he will begin to dig around and, and, and point out things that you need to work on. And he will. In time, he will. But he loves you so much that he's not going to overwhelm you with all of those things all at once. So if God, who is perfect and who never sinned, chooses to graciously, day by day, little by little, sanctify us along and along, then who are we as Christians to come alongside of our brothers and sisters and point out, and, find, and worst of all, find joy in pointing out the flaws that we find to be fault finders in those people. And we begin to turn over rocks, turn over stones in their life just because it makes us feel better to point out the flaws in other people. It's just not right. It, it is not the way of God. And here's the thing. That is a childish, immature, um, arrogant, prideful, fault-finding way that a mature Christian will not do. Anyone that's walked with the Lord for some time has also most likely, and most every Christian has, when you first get saved, you're just overwhelmed with the kindness, forgiveness, love, and grace of God. So you're not, you're just so thankful that you're forgiven that the last thing you're doing is running around pointing a finger, judging everybody else. But then as you walk with the Lord a little while and you start getting, you know, you start giving, you know, doing a little better, you start fouling off some pitches in front of um, you know, folks, you start doing a little better. You start, you know, you start doing a little better. You get a little, little, little puffy chest out. Uh, 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 look at them. Ooh, that's my heart beating. Um, 
You start getting a little pride about you. And then you start, hey, man, you need to tighten up. Hey, man, watch your mouth. Hey, man, what'd you say? Oh, you're supposed to be a man of God. <laughs> Turn right. Better get right before you get left, boy. Turn or burn. Turn or burn. You start seeing these people. Now, that's like being a, a terrible too. That's like a toddler of the faith, man. It's just that little teenager that knows everything, can't be told nothing. You know, you got that little, you know, 15-year-old man that just, you know, knows more than his dad. It's like that's the Christian that's running around telling everybody everything they're doing wrong. And they, they can't wait to show you where you're failing. That's also immature, childish. And, uh, man, that's not good. So why do I bring all this up? Well, I bring it up for a couple things, and we're going to close this video out. A good coach and a good leader and a mature Christian does not find joy in overwhelming other people by informing them of all of their flaws and all of the areas in their life that they need to work on. And they don't find joy and they don't go up to that person and say, hey, you need to work on this. You need to work on this. You, not, you need to do better. You need to do better. Because, hey, we'll get to that. God takes that approach. We'll get to it. You're already my son. You're already my daughter. I love you. We're going to get to that. And, and in his way and in his timing, he does sanctify us through and through. But just as an encouragement to you as a believer, uh, if you've had other Christians who have judged you and who have uh, tried to belittle you and make you feel less than or make you feel uh, that you're not good enough or, or, or pointed out your flaws and, and it seemed like they enjoyed making you feel bad about your sins, I just want to say on behalf of God and on behalf of other believers and on behalf of my family here that, that claim to be believers, I'm sorry because that is not like our older brother, Jesus, he's not like that. Um, he, he loves and he's gracious and he's kind and he's patient with us um, in our humanity because we're all human and we all struggle. And uh, he doesn't find joy in pointing out the flaws of others. Uh, and if you will, just recall the story where the woman was caught in the act of adultery. Uh, these guys, these old boys bring up this woman. They drag her out in front of other people and try to shame her and say, hey, uh, rabbi, teacher, this woman was, we caught her in the act of adultery, which they were being creeps, or I guess. So what were they doing? I'd have called them out. Um, but anyways, they say the law says you should not put a death of woman is you know, been, been caught in the act of adultery. Well, Jesus so calmly, instead of, you know, judging her and being, being harsh on her, he just bends over and starts writing something in the sand. And he's just so cool and calm. And then he just looks at the crowd and them guys and says, hey, let, let he who is without sin throw the first stone. And um, them old boys from the oldest to the youngest start laying down their rocks and walking off. And in the end, it's just her, it's just the woman and Jesus. And he just says, uh, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. And he can't just, just so kind and gracious and loving and encouraging. And um, Now, Jesus, what Jesus could have done is he could have been real petty and said, all right, hold on, fellas. Hey, hey, uh, hey, John, come over here, buddy. You the one that brought her up here. Come here, stand here. Let me, let me tell everybody what you did last night. Nobody was watching about 1230 in the middle of the night. Come over here, Steve. Hey, Steve, come here, bud. You were, you were laughing when we drove that woman out here. And Come over here, Steve. Um, won't you tell everybody what, what you did with that woman at the fish market the other day when your wife was at the house looking after your baby? Huh? What was that? Hey, Clarence. Clarence. Go, oh, come here, Clarence. Come on. Come on, Clarence. Tell her, tell her the way you was talking yesterday when you was riding your donkey. Huh? You going to tell her, Clarence? No? You know, I'll tell her. Jesus could have got real petty, but he didn't. He just calmly let them run their mouth. And then he said, hey, let all of y'all who are perfect go ahead and start slinging these, throw these rocks. So people like to throw rocks and overturn rocks. But Jesus patiently in his time does not condemn us. And then he encourages us and graciously says, now, when it's us and we're alone, he says, hey, I need you to work on this. Go and sin no more. And then that is the heart of God. So I've rambled enough. It's time to go home. We're at 14 minutes, and I've probably lost you all. Happy Father's Day. We love you. Peace.